Here we see an example of light refracting through a cup of water. And what I wanted to demonstrate is in the early morning hours, around 4 a.m., only a small amount of artificial light from light sources in and around our apartment, particularly multicolored LED Christmas lights, are what you are seeing in this glass of water. So here there's a glass filled with tap water, filtered tap water, and the yellow and red Christmas light bulbs are sending light photons that pass through the glass and the water and the glass prismatically distorts. If we look outside the apartment here we can see glare from the window and even the lens produces these kind of strange projections inside the camera. The superlative low light performance of the iPhone 14 is able to see the way the natural human eye goes. That's our little gnome. This is a crystal apparatus that my mother has, and she frequently places uh, other shiny little bits in it. It's a decoration sitting on a mirror in front of where she sits. Look at the light play. This scattering of light is something that people often look for called fire in a gemstone, such as moissanite or diamond. These are large pieces of cut crystal. This is a stained glass lamp, and I'm showing that the iPhone 14 in wide angle or in regular mode uh, is able to take the LED light, and you can see the LED light and its light guide right there, and break it up. This is the pendulum and weights of this cuckoo clock. It's a 19, early 1990s model made in Germany from the Black Forest. And if you watch the minute end, you can actually see it move. Makes that fun ticking noise. I pull the weights like this to energize the movement. Gravity pulls on those weights, which moves the movement. This is an interesting little spinner that's turned off right now. Normally it would have an LED light and some glitter flickering around. This is uh, a clock being refracted through um, Admiral Fitzroy device, more on that later. That is uh, my mother's first uh, QVC purchase, an Elgin clock with a spinning crystal. It runs on a single AA or LR6 battery. And it spins the crystal as part of its regulation. Uh, despite being a quartz movement, it has this mechanical oscillator that is suspended via magnets in a very highly efficient movement. You can see it there, it's an Elgin, and it says that it's quartz. You can see it's uh, about uh, 4.40 in the morning, I zoom in. That's brass, it's kind of a warm color alloy. Look at the crystals in this Admiral Fitzroy apparatus here. We can see that uh, Admiral Fitzroy is a storm glass from the 19th century or 1800s. It says that if there's clear liquid, it's fair weather. If it's murky liquid, there's rainy weather. If there's crystals at the top, it indicates thunderstorm. If they're large, flaky crystals, there's cloudy skies or snow. And if there are threads of crystals, it means windy weather. More or less, this works on the solubility of the solute in the solvent and the effect of temperature and vapor pressure on this apparatus. It produces um, beautiful crystals. But you can see right here crystals. these beautiful crystals and, it is in fact and that is pretty emblematic of the sky it's very cloudy today and um, it's been kind of on and off raining they're not rainy at the moment while i'm recording this incredibly this device it gave you a full pan there of the device there if we look at it at scale and zoom out you can see all of these things in relation in to one another, including the primary light source, that LED light from below the glass shelf. Relationship between the state so of the crystals go ahead and have a nice look at it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's fun how a glass tube reflects objects and, temperature, and changes their scale. It acts like a lens. 
Now if we spin this around, you can take a closer look at the crystals inside. Go ahead and have a look at these crystals. I think they're made of acetate, kind of like one of those hand healers, but I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to look it up. I believe it's mineral oil in there and, and sodium acetate, but I could be mistaken. Please don't take my word on that. If you happen to know, leave a comment below. Here's some aluminum foil and it's highly faceted, so it reflects light in the most unusual way. This was used in the oven, so this was heated to 400 Fahrenheit in the presence of food for about 70 minutes. Um, I'm not sure that that changed the aluminum foil much. If anything, it probably lightly annealed it. But um, this was just to demonstrate. That's, that's the light that's reflecting off the aluminum. That's the lamp shade in particular. And you'll see here, as I zoom out, I sharpen the focus, and then it's like a fabric. And as we go in here, there's a chip on board wire LED, up to 90% efficient at converting light, uh, electricity into light. Now the rolling shutter CMOS effect can be viewed here, where the camera really struggles to image those chips uh, the right way. If we switch to the wide angle and zoom in again, you can see that the CMOS is overwhelmed and it's doing weird things, but we still get a good look at those chip on board wires. If we pan over here, we can see them from a different angle. This is the microwave oven's clock, and um, that's a segmented LED clock. And I, I wanted to show you it's 4.10 in the morning, but you can see kind of the latent uh, layout of the LEDs there that are not illuminated and all the options that are possible.